Um, do I have everything running? Yeah, yeah, I think so, bud. Running. It's running. It's running. I so. yeah, I greetings, it's greetings, federal agents, and also presumably some others. Yeah. Uh, yes. Presumably they, uh... also shout out to the Nachrichtendienst des Bundes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hello and welcome to, well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. All right, go. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm the person talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hi. Yeah. Uh, fuck, I didn't start recording locally. Uh, it's fine. Mm. You probably <laughs> I, it. My pronouns probably fine. Are, are, no, not after the fucking board takes episode. Oh my god. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. And we have a guest. Uh yes. one Ooh. might say a celebrity, not quite the Pope though. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't think I'm quite there that yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm my arson crime you. I am the person talking now. Uh my pronouns are it and she. Hell yeah. Good set of pronouns. That that's a new set. We haven't had that before. Hell yeah, breaking new ground. That's right, you like unlock a special sort of bonus move, yeah. <laughs> we see here a selection of stock images, and I really yes. delved hard into the stock images for this, uh, for this episode. And can I just say, I love every single one of these fucking things. Uh, yes. The subject of tonight's episode, cybersecurity. As you can see by all of these hackers. Um, yes. If you if you if you don't have the sort of the visual components of this, what you've got here is a succession of dudes in hoodies and balaclavas. One of them is like tapping a big sort of cyber map. One of them is pointing yeah. a gun at the screen through the Matrix code. Um, Some there there is a gloved hand emerging from a laptop, which I believe is not hacking, but. Uh, a derivative of the movie The Ring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's also I, a wizard. I, there is also a wizard, yeah. There is a wizard, yes. So with these entirely factual depictions of... We have this, a is, man, this is me on an average morning, honestly. Yeah, this here is, is a man holding all, all up a, these, yeah. a social security card to a laptop Presumably so he can be hacked by someone else. <laughs> yeah, he's showing it to the webcam. I was, so, I was yeah. going to make an identity theft joke, but I think as someone with that as a charge, I shouldn't, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, with all of these, and with Maya's help, we are going to talk about cybersecurity, the dark art of getting into computers and keeping people from doing that. But first... We have to do the goddamn news. Jarring shift of tone. Ah, uh, it's real bad again, isn't it? Uh, the the police mm. uh, have uh, murdered uh, another black uh, teenager, or was it a teenager, or was it like I don't know sure another young black man? Or, but yeah, uh, young, blameless, uh, and uh, murdered in an extremely like egregious way, even by the standards of the just for... twenty-nine. Okay, twenty-nine. Yep. Mm. But it it feels like um, you know it's difficult to keep it straight uh, now because it happens exactly, so often. Exactly, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they sort of like run together, and that's horrible. It's like one of the worst things about it is you get like desensitized and then resensitized again and then desensitized again. Uh, but yeah, so so Memphis police uh, in Tennessee uh, murdered uh, murdered a man, uh, and there is video. I recommend not watching it. I have nice. because I. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, it probably I have, says I have watched the bi it. videos yeah. uh, from like television, but I can't bring myself to watch it. I don't yeah. need to watch it. Uh, I don't need to watch it. One it of the things a, I, I do want to like say, it's like as bad as anyone it, says it's, it is. It's, it's horrifying, and we are not easily grossed out or you know shaken people. But I do want to say they just like uh, eat him to death right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just let him die basically i i want to say like, sort of frustration over their own incompetence like they right. weren't able to arrest him uh like as they would have liked to and so they just sort of beat him to death uh, out of yeah. like frustration um if if right. anyone tells you that this is anything other than conspiracy murder one uh they are lying to you because that's, I feel that's like what it is 
I feel like of note is also that Memphis, like they followed all the like, how, however many demands there were for reform, and they mm. followed all of those. They have enacted all of those, and they're very proud of that as a police department. And this should still happen. Like, yes, <laughs> not, not 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 to imply that reform sh- could work, but like, right. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, I, the, the, I presume that Memphis is going to get put under like a federal consent decree after that's this. That's what I told Chris, yeah, um, for all the yeah. fucking good that does. But I yeah. do want to say, I want to say real quick, and sorry, Alice, uh, no, that I, it's worth noting that these five officers were black, mm-hmm. and people are using that as saying, well, see, uh, you know, whatever, racist, insane shit. But no, I mean, police is still very much a construct of white supremacy if you don't understand sure, how that intersects with anti-blackness and the dehumanization of the people you're supposed to protect regardless of the color of their skin. You're not getting the fucking joke. Uh, when the FOP is coming out and saying this is a criminal assault, goddamn. Uh, but this yeah. should, you know, let this let this continue to radicalize you. The you don't need thing, cops. Fuck no. cops. So on and so the, forth. The other thing I wanted to draw out is that this is once again, the like nth iteration of a stupid ass idea that has been like disproven on its own merits any number of times, which is the we'll just get a special unit of roving cops to like do the sort of high intensity bullshit. It's exact. It's Crash Rampart again. This uh, like the police chief in Memphis had like previously done this in Atlanta with another unit that had like traumatized of like a bunch of patrons in a raid on a gay bar that they had to settle for like 10 million dollars or something like that so this was a a, a special high intensity unit called the fucking scorpion unit um with you know about as much they accountability sound as you can real imagine. tough you know like, yeah, yeah, that's- yeah. <laughs> um it's just a, a succession of sort of like terrible ideas piled on top of each other. So, as to what will come of this, we we do not know. But uh, I, I think it's it's meet for us to put some kind of like worthy cause in the description, whether that's bail funds or like crowd funds yeah. or I, don't I, know I like tweeted yet. about yeah, it. Same shit yeah, as always. Big issue is we don't we don't see the same kind of protesting that we did a couple of years ago because no, I think I was... folks are folks are a lot more complacent because we have the good president, not the bad president. <laughs> well, I think it's the also same that level it's, of violence continues. It's also cold <laughs> outside. It's there's a lot of thing people aren't you know. I do think that contributes to it, and I think there's just a fatigue yeah. about it. It's like yep, this shit. It's it's the same thing we said after Sandy Hook, right? If that mm. wasn't gonna do it, then nothing's gonna fucking do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it was it, and I, I just, I, like I said, yeah, you know, I, I just hope that this radicalizes you rather than leads you to despair. But that's shit good. That's gonna do to bring Tyree Nichols back. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, fuck cops. I, uh, I do want to say, and I said this on Twitter. Um, you the sort of regardless of of a political bet. It is your job as a human being to make the cops' lives as difficult and as unhappy as possible. I mean, some real, <laughs> real weird, real gross shit. Like, absolutely bog them down, waste their time, fuck them. All right. To, to be clear, that's that's, uh, that's not a uh, that's not fuck in terms of no. This sexless. should not be construed as uh, legal. Absolutely, advice. do not. Do, do not, no, do no, do not strap a dick to your, strap a firecracker <laughs> to your dick is my advice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be used like a couple of tactical yeah. micro bleeps there. Um, well, I don't. Uh, I I did I did DM Devin to ask if they could put a picture of my sandwich in the in the in the thing here. You need a rotating Perfect. sandwich. Rotating I, sandwich. Dude, All right, jarring I, shift of tone kitchen, to the rotating yeah. sandwich. I pay too much for in, the sandwich, but I am I am <laughs> full when I eat it. In other news. Did you hear someone uh, uh, hacked the no fly list? What the yeah. hell? Wait, yeah. how could that be? Incredible. If, if you have information <laughs> relating to this heinous <laughs> crime, uh, you know, speak now. Because we don't... Damn, I, I might have an info or two on this. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, I guess I made national news again. and Even bigger this time, because Tumblr found me funny. Um, <laughs> that sums it up pretty well. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just was bored and hanging out with one of my girlfriends and 
found the no-fly list laying around on a server, and that's news now. <laughs> it was uh, it was on like an uh, like a small airline server, right? A ho- Ohioan airline, which once again Ohio exists apparently for a brief Ohio. second to fuck up the world. We'll uh, be eliminated. <laughs> we must uh, level Rocky River, Ohio. <laughs> nothing but dirt. This ashes. would not have happened if um, there wasn't a need for airlines in Ohio because. The governor, you know, rejected all that high speed rail funding in 2008. Yeah. Uh, People so should right. be allowed to leave Ohio, though. I Honestly, I think the funniest thing about this that I haven't really talked about a lot on like various podcasts and stuff is that the only reason we know the list we have is from 2019 is because this airline is absolutely abysmal at crisis communications and keeps confirming to all the media that the list is real and from 2019. That is the only reason we know that. We assumed it was from 2022, but uh, the airline loves to tell all the news outlets that reach out to them that, no, the list you have is real and also from that time and that year. <laughs> I don't worry, it's out of date. Um, yeah, I think they shut up by now. I'm assuming the TSA reached out to them and asked them what the fuck they're doing uh, yeah. with like communications because that's probably not what you're supposed to do. And I guess they the other thing the updated list. Uh, mm, my dad like, they've just was... been letting all kinds of people fly for <laughs> <laughs> who aren't supposed uh, to be able to. <laughs> I, I've never... Uh, I don't know anything about AMFO. Anyway, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I I called my dad uh, to tell him Maya that you would be on the episode. He mm-hmm. found this whole thing very fascinating, and it was it was a combination of uh, like, do you do you need legal advice, and when is the episode <laughs> coming out, and how legal is this? And I'm like, we're not doing it live on air, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but do, I mean, do, do I'm, get I'm, your lawyers to check anything I say. No, I generally our, know our what lawyers. I can and can't say. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our lawyers are just my parents. Team. Yes, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the legal team that is right behind us and listening and waiting for to oh. swat I, our heads if we say any wrong thing. I, I, I well, think the problem for me is more like I'm flying to uh, to Europe in like a week's time, and I can feel my experience at the airport getting worse the longer this <laughs> podcast goes. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're gonna make it count, Alice. Uh, oh yeah, I'm getting fucking cavity searched, you know? Uh, they're go- oh, they're God. going like... They're going in from like the ass, and then there's going to be like fucking. They're going to be feeling my tonsils, you know. So that's something to look I, forward to. I I will say, you know, under certain uh, certain circumstances, it might feel pretty good. Um. Yeah. 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 I I will say, if you're a lawyer and you listen <laughs> to this dumb shit, uh, <laughs> my yeah, condolences. Yeah. Do you have to know? Let us know what we're gonna. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're hosted in the United States. We can say anything we fucking want. So, point, so yeah. Maya, I guess the other thing about this is that you you have now like caused nine eleven too, right? That's the yes, yeah. yes. I have yeah, been congratulations. Informed, I have been informed via email that I unfortunately took the only copy of this list. Like some conspiracy theorists from the US informed me that now the TSA doesn't have this list anymore, and <laughs> I should have just told the FBI about this instead, uh, because this would have been better for everyone. What? Uh, but I took the list. Now the TSA doesn't have that anymore, and whenever you fly now if there's a terrorist next to you that is my fault uh yeah. so right. take I'll that take to my heart. fucking chance you can <laughs> you can tag me on twitter if you're ever next to a terrorist on a plane i, just, I, I don't met, really I mentioned see this how... before the podcast but hmm. this is the same theory that many municipal planning departments in the united <laughs> states have where when you submit plans by email you have to submit two copies which means you just attach the same file twice <laughs> I guess I guess the thing is that like the security of the no fly list such as it is doesn't really depend on it being secret right like in any yeah. way right um, the, the, the only reason it's secret is because they don't want everyone to know just how racist they are like yeah. that, that and is everyone the only knew, reason yeah, everyone knew that that's like, like yeah no like it was known but there was just no proof to back it up and like the fact i think like some of the widest things is just that there are like people who at the time that the snapshot of the list that we have was taken were four years old hmm. there are four year old people on this list and they're not on like they're not even on like the screening list where you get where you always get sss at the airport as in like 
at enhanced screening and like questioning and shit like the fun stuff to say yeah not. fun glove uh, time yes yeah, yeah the, the thing they do to like all the trans people uh but um <laughs> <laughs> but, but but basically I, I don't like, like the phrase fun but basically, glove time <laughs> <laughs> but basically like the, the wild thing is that you can tell from the fact that no fly is so much bigger than a screening list that the u.s is so sure of their predictive policing shit that they will just ban you from flying based on like oh yeah you live in the same village as muhammad atta was was in like 15 years ago and wait more than 15 years ago i am what is time <laughs> one, one time you're on ago, the same bus <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one time you're on the same bus as one yeah. guy who was also on the same but bus that, as yeah, Abbas. And, and the other, <laughs> but, but the other interesting thing the list shows that is now becoming more and more apparent, the more like researchers from non-US like outlets and academics look at it, is that you can start to map out who the US works with together in intelligence mm. and who the US inherently trusts. Because like there are so many like Irish organized crime figures who are only relevant in Ireland on that list. Uh, and like the only thing that can really mean is that UK intelligence like just gives the US some names and they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. We put them on the list, right? Put, because they're, put some, they're like... Uh, put some old flaggerties on there to, uh, you know, yeah, to balance yeah, out the Muslim yeah. names. Whitey Bulger <laughs> is notably untouched, but... Uh... Yeah. Lord, Lord, Lord help me, it's time to go back to the old me. Like, yeah. and, and I also said this before the recording, but Bellingcat, like, found some, like, random French poet on the list and they were like, we don't really know why this French poet got on here. And as some French investigative journalists, I think from uh, from Libre, uh, looked into it, and they were they found out that this guy um, like was once flying from the U.S. with his wife, and like TSA was being like kind of shitty to him, so he shouted over to his wife like, "Oh yeah, uh, uh, this this might take a little while, but I'm sure I'll get through. I probably just look like a terrorist." And now he's on no fly. Uh, so, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, the, 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 this, there isn't like a whole lot to this list other than the US just like decides who they want to watch list and who they're just going to ban from flying. This, this I don't know. I, dead I, people oh, we're going to end too, up on the no right? fly list. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I am, but, I'm just imagining. I already like... brought up his name, but like Muhammad Atta is on that list. And, and okay, this, well, list was not... crea- this list was created after 9 11. Mike, Mike. Sometimes my guy, you just need uh... to be sure. <laughs> Well, how dumb would they feel if they, it, like, he had done nine eleven too from beyond the grave to like palpitate? <laughs> yeah, but no. Yeah. N- now we already know double. that it's my fault anyway. So that's true. Like, that's true. Like, like no, he I wouldn't just, even I just... be at fault this time. I think the no fly list should actually be like a physical document. And then you you could steal it like it was the Declaration of Independence. Oh yeah, like right. national treasure. Man, this season sucks. <laughs> it, it's sort of like the Coke formula. You know, two yeah. people know it and they can't be on the same plane. Um, well, oh yeah, we so learned... I brought you a hmm. gift for this podcast, so the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I see you've made oh yourself God. a home in Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> Staying I don't know why me. you didn't text us to hang out, but that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> cool. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't have time with my whole heist plan and like yeah, and running from like the yeah. National Archives police. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, one very one interesting. Please well, return the, the Declaration of Independence, sir. <laughs> well, one one interesting thing I found out again when I was doing some research into like this whole thing and how the whole like uh, listing system works is that I uh, like found like really long documents from the FBI where they describe how it works because like someone foia them about it. Uh, and basically it's interesting how like, obviously this is the reason this is homed in the FBI is because that makes interagency collaboration, which is a cool buzzword, uh, way easier than if it were actually home at DHS. Also, I think it makes budgeting easier. I think they get more money if it's at the FBI. Uh, but basically every intelligence service in the US has like stakes and employees working at the terrorism screening center. And yes, that does include the US Postal Service Intelligence Ser- uh, Postal Intelligence Service. That is so Ooh. hard to say. Uh, and that's how guys, I didn't know that that's was how thing. But it's, our, it's our even no, the US the USPS PIS, and that is actually what it's called. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it is a real agency that uh, surveils your mail, but also your Twitter posts. Um yeah, we're hell yeah. No, I'm, yeah. this is cool. I want the agency with a 99% conviction rate reading my posts. Um, 
<laughs> but so, so now at this point, how much trouble are you in, both sort of legally and practically? Like, okay, so I can't really <laughs> answer the legally question since I have been indicted since 2021, and I shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't. <laughs> that, that is all I'm going to say. Most indicted okay. guest, unless Sean has done some shit we don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I can't really make legal uh, legal statements because the US is going to love if love it if I do that. Uh, but basically, like practically, uh, since that indictment, which is unrelated to the current thing, of course, unless they got really good at predictive policing. Uh, <laughs> but, mm. but basically, I cannot leave Switzerland, presumably ever, uh, given that any other country would extradite me to the US. Uh, so that's yeah. not a that's yeah. not a bad amount of trouble to be in. I would say <laughs> there, there are worse countries to be stuck in. Yeah, um, that's that. You I, you I, are I literally quoting what yeah. I say in every interview when people are like, "Oh, so how do you feel about being stuck in Switzerland?" Like Switzerland fucking sucks, and it's a police surveillance <laughs> state, but it's still like one of the less bad countries to be stuck in forever. But yeah. I enjoyed it Weird, when I was sort of there. Like <laughs> Alpine redoubt, Henri Guizon kind of like. Yeah, I mean, I mean, state. like if it comes down to it, we have enough bunkers for me. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're fighting a nuclear war over your extradition. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they might do it. They're crazy, you know. Yeah. Great, yeah. <laughs> I just learned I'm German. What a fucking horrible thing to learn live on air. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Well, what are you doing? <laughs> worry about me, worry about you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is like the main like practical thing that happened. I guess another practical uh, like consequence I have from this is that I am I now unfortunately have clout. Uh, I unfortunately have like seventy four k followers on Twitter now, which is both good and bad. It's really funny that I can make the worst posts ever and get like a shit ton of interactions. That has improved my self-esteem so much i can just tweet fortnite balls and get like thousands of likes <laughs> i saw uh, fortnite <laughs> balls yeah <laughs> incredible posting yeah so yeah i don't know but i yeah, mean that that's yeah, kind of well, it with like consequences well congratulations <laughs> on being in that much trouble. trouble congratulations on yeah i was about to I'm say in we, so we much can... trouble i got fucking twitter cloud like imagine <laughs> We roll. can only aspire, you know. It's like yeah. uh, we just have to. St we have to start beef. Really yeah, just me exactly. starting beef. You know, I, it's like you and Steven Donzinger. You know, like who, who else has gotten that, that in that much trouble and still been able to post? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's one of the most important things about being in trouble is posting through it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Posting through the uh, 2023, the year of posting through your federal indictment. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was the goddamn news. All right, it's on to the extremely sketchily put together, uh, like, potted history of, of what is hacking, a subject that about is... which I know nothing. I don't know anything about this I either. I used to know quite a bit about this when I was a I, kid, I, but I, I'm sure I've forgotten most of it. I know embarrassingly little about this. That oh yes, gonna yes. Say. This is from, <laughs> this is about. Oh, well, we're going to start with freaking. Yes, yes, yes. yeah, we are because a, a uh, framework so of discussion about which we have no idea. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. It is the bullshit podcast. Uh, so, I used so to read twenty six hundred. Leave me alone. Yeah. Hell yeah, so, you you are you are already hmm. doing more than I ever will. Uh, <laughs> so, so cybersecurity is is a portmanteau of two words: cyber, which means on the computer, and security, which means security. Um, and okay. cybersecurity was invented when going on the computer was invented. Um, but before we had the computer, we had networks of stuff, most obviously, phones. And that was how all of the shit ran, was phone networks. Um, including a lot of surprisingly vital infrastructure. Um, and it all worked through tones. And someone figured out that you could trick a phone system into thinking that it was off the hook and on the hook at the same time and thereby sort of get into lots of interesting places with a Captain Crunch bosun whistle, uh, which came in your pack of Captain Crunch, and which emits a 2600 hertz tone. And 2600, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that they, 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 you know, they were like, yeah, kids know what a bosun is, right? 
<laughs> very, very clear sort of structure get, get, of rank in Captain Crunch's armor. Yeah, service, I was about know. to say, yeah, uh, Cap- Captain Crunch runs a tight ship. <laughs> this is this is old fashioned Navy shit right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There was actually like there was a kid who like could, had perfect pitch and could just whistle his way into like AT and T systems and stuff. There is a video of that, and it's so fucking weird to watch. And there's apparently also some people who trained their parrots to to be able to do dial tones. And that's Beautiful. like even that's somehow even wilder. Like, <laughs> I would I think you could probably train a parrot to do more advanced hacking now it's just yeah, no you, one's bothered yeah. to try i should um, just train a pirate to look for chunk and servers for me that that is probably the move trying to hack with its tiny little like claws Aww. yes yeah, <laughs> adorable like trying to um real real pecking pecking at the hun, if you know what i mean yeah peck and yeah. hun yeah so so yeah, the next yeah, level yeah, up for typing this. classes in uh high school really uh or yeah. in elementary school really really paid off you know, I still do pecking this is hunt, back. but I'm faster than I was then. Uh, so I, something... am, I am not a fast typist, if that if that mm. surprises you. Well, you've still the parrot bait. Um, but the next yeah. step up from this Fuck was you, a... Mavis Began. <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 like, multifunction tone generator, a blue box, so-called, because they put it in a box and the box was blue. And you could just do anything with that, because uh, it made a bunch of tones. It was essentially just a fancy little sort of, like, audio keyboard. Um... And, uh, weirdly enough, the cool kids who made that, the sort of, like, nerd orbiters of them were Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. Um, yeah. And so... That, 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 that is why Steve Wozniak, to this day, is allowed to call himself a hacker without people rolling their eyes too hard in it. <laughs> yeah, he, he was around while a guy whistled down a phone line and got into, like, AT&T's servers or whatever. Um... <laughs> I that's that's all I had on phone hacking or freaking if you prefer. Yeah, 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 I think that is that is about the history of that. That is relevant. I mean, there, uh, there, there I think the more interesting thing is that like hacktivism already kind of started out in that era. Like mm-hmm. the whole idea of using hack hacking for activism things. I don't know the specifics anymore, but there was like a group that started out in the freaking times and stayed around for a little longer. Well, all of these guys were like pirate radio guys, yeah, uh, and like working out of like you know VW vans and shit. Right, neat little um, freaks, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. So of course it's a counterculture thing. Why wouldn't it be? But uh, th- then someone made the mistake of inventing the internet, and we're kind of off to the races. Um, yeah, once so once again, a thing idea. you can blame Switzerland partially for. Uh, CERN, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> putting putting two phone lines uh, in um, the uh, yeah. Like, Hadron Unfortunately, collider. they sent Americans to Switzerland, and the internet wasn't that good. What <laughs> happened? They they put two computers together. Blasphemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be fair, we also had like we should you know we don't have time to get into ARPANET and all that stuff. Yeah. But... <laughs> we 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 uh, taught the sand to think, and then we taught the sand to talk to itself. Um, yeah. But so Incredible. I found a train. I found a train connection, uh, which I was very yes. proud of. I was proud of myself for doing this. Uh, because we like to do a little train. We like we like trains. Yes. Um, this is this is the Tech Model Railroad Club at MIT. Um, and I had to find out a lot about MIT in order to do this, and I found out that I hate MIT, and it sounds terrible to go there, like sort of nerd boot camp. Um, they, yeah, they yeah you, like you can go there if you want to slave away for VC money. Um, but you would still that, be I better would than recommend. the nerds at Caltech. Yeah. Apparently they do this thing on your first day, like it's the Marines, where they're like, "Look to the nerd to your left. Look to the nerd to your right. One, like only one of the three of you will will graduate the institute or whatever." Oh uh, like, yes, that's uh, that's an old engineering thing. Yeah, yeah, you can't be a hard ass about that. I mean, I get that it's like you're all child prodigies and you're going to have to be like competitively graded for the first. No, time no, the they got to they get. They're going to run you through a whole bunch of these shitty weeder courses. Uh, where you're gonna have to like memorize how to use a bomb calorimeter, bomb calorimeter, even though you're doing like computer engineering, or in my case, civil engineering. Like you're I just don't need haze. to know this. You, <laughs> yeah, they you're haze entitled. You. They haze you. <laughs> you're entitled to yeah. the little ribbon they give you for graduating basic training. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's it's worth noting. Uh, we we covered part of this in in the college episode, but I I cannot say it enough. Uh, I'll die on this hill. Undergrad doesn't matter. You already did the hard part, which was getting in. Uh, mm-hmm. Go to Temple University. Uh, get kicked out of the draft horse. Have a ball. 
uh, and then I don't know, get a PhD from a respectable institution. <laughs> Fuck you, or drop <laughs> out of grad school like I did. Yeah. Uh, so just, uh, just uh, don't ever go to college like I did. Uh, uh, yeah. You can you can still make the U.S. your enemy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but if you, if, if you had been uh, Maya and gone to college, you could in fact leave Switzerland. Yeah, but yeah, also I would true. like work at Facebook now and be a fucking loser. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you for yourself. to put it. You, you could comfort yourself with your like you know two hundred thousand dollar a second salary. Um, so. <laughs> So, uh, unsurprisingly, a lot of MIT students who are into model trains were also into computing, yes. um, and most notably this this um, uh, tech model railroad club, TMRC. They had a signals and power subcommittee who were trying to like automate all of their signals, and were remarkably successful. You could automate a train based off of like a computer and a cabinet. Um, and there's ideology happening here, because all of these guys are the same guys who are like working in the AI lab and, you know, thinking about things like how information wants to be free, or like, making up a bunch of computer slang that sounds dumb as hell but is still kind of in use if you're old enough, uh, like, grokking shit, or frobbing shit, or whatever. Uh, I all hate how I know this acts. shit and I'm like, yeah. too young for that stuff. Uh yeah. <laughs> As long um, as you don't listen to, uh, as long as you don't listen to Stallman, yes, information wants to be free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just yeah, want what, to know. what do you want that information for, motherfucker? Um, <laughs> <laughs> who and, makes well, these nice Osgood Bradley cars back here? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Don't. Someone oh, is, I, some loser at MIT, probably. <laughs> yeah, they have just MIT. handcrafted those nice Osgood Bradley cars. I don't know. Uh, that looks very nice, um, you know. I, <laughs> but the, the most abiding, the most abiding piece of jargon TMRC is responsible for is um, in MIT sort of lexicon. A hack is like a prank or a practical joke. Thus, hacker comes from these guys allegedly. Um, it's the most probable etymology. Um, but they're not the only ones. Like every college in the U.S. had guys doing this. Stanford was the other big one. Uh, they had steam tunnels, Stanford baby. Yeah. Um, yep. But none of them had model trains, apart from MIT, to my knowledge. Um, yeah. So that's the train connection. That's the train connection. Um, but then you know the internet is becomes more of a thing. Uh, people other than the military start using it for things other than you know sending packets to a van and back again. Uh, next slide, please. Oh my god. I, I already like the notes here. <laughs> I just read the notes earlier and I was like, hell yeah, we're bringing up the best movie of all time. Kevin That's Mitnick right. did nothing wrong. No, uh, Ke no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Mitnick we, are not, almost... we are not going to defend Kevin Mitnick here. He's now a like, cringe entrepreneur. Yeah, I know I, that, but I'm talking uh, about the, the prison conviction, the which time, was bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But time, yeah. I, I'm still one of those people who have a shitty sticker on their laptop, that, laptop that says, put Kevin back. Uh, <laughs> 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 which I don't, I obviously don't agree with his conviction, but also, like, what happened since then is kind of regrettable. So, oh, yeah, he's yeah, a douchebag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, have, you have to go back. You have to go I back. Don't, it's, I, <laughs> I don't know who this person is. Okay, so Kevin Mitnick is like the first famous hacker. Uh, he went to jail a couple of times, actually. Uh, the first time off of wire fraud, and the second time. Uh, they had passed the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act in 1986, and so there was now like a federal offense of hacking, which he was convicted of in, I right. think, 95? It, it, it is interesting, though, how the US still uses wire fraud uh, to convict mm. hacking, because that means they can stack more charges. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they can, give you, they, they, can now, they can now give you CFAA and wire fraud, and then multiple charges of wire fraud. And... Very, very uh, 19th century legal institution, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not so, anyone's so, fault you fell for social engineering I, I, on your I just, own. I just love the concept of wire fraud, which is literally just doing fraud over a wire that goes between two states. That is pretty much the entire definition yeah. of wire fraud, as to my understanding. That is so open to the point that I have a wire fraud charge for talking to a journalist who has written an article that has been written in the state of Washington. What? Yeah, it's it, it's it's really some like Nucky Thompson shit that like the intent of a wire fraud charge is to catch the guy who's running like a a racket the way, where he gets the horse yeah. racing results a second earlier, you know? Yeah, but by, by, by the way, the like whole the whole fraud bit is that I was selling merch, so 
Nice. Don't don't true. sell merch if you don't want to do fraud. So, so so what Kevin Mitnick actually did to get this second charge was he uh, he he broke into some IRS and social security systems and I, I think some others like Sun Sun Microsystems um, and like Sun Microsystems copies. ruined my life. Uh, well, he ruined their mm. shit back by pirating their software. That's all he did. He, yes, he copied good. it. He didn't good. alter anything. He just copied it. Um, however, um, the, like. People knew so little about this that it was possible to like for for the feds amongst others to go. This guy could start World War Three doing mm -hmm. this shit, and yeah, what yeah. he was doing was he could largely... dial into the NORAD modem or something. He, yeah, he, yeah. He still, he still calls himself the world's most famous hacker, and that is like part of why he should go back. Uh, but <laughs> I will say the, the law enforcement case around him is in some insane bullshit. Oh, ab uh, absolutely! I am not going. I am not going out here to defend any no, CFAA conviction. Yeah. But yeah. like, because it's a bullshit law in the first place. But yeah, uh, but so I do recommend you read Ghost in the Wires, uh, and, and for no other reason than apparently it'll make Maya unhappy. <laughs> so, but most of what he did was what we would now call social engineering, which is a fancy way of saying you call somebody and you say, "Hey, can you let me into the computer?" With some yeah. level of lying involved, and you they say, say, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. To to say it as the kids of today, like me, would say, "You just call someone with risk." And ask them to let you into their computer <laughs> systems. Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 like you do the thing that millennials today find very difficult. You call someone on the phone, uh, and you say, <laughs> oh, I, "I can't do that." Uh, you can you can do social engineering over email or even over sure. text messages. You can social engineer someone on Discord. So you just you can just oh, lie. don't worry. You just, you, just, you just lie. You just go on the internet and you just lie, and it's that easy because most people aren't expecting to be tricked. And, uh, like, particularly if they don't work for, like, something that they consider sensitive, you can just be like, yeah, I, I sell fucking servers, what server do you use so I know what my competition is? And they're like, oh, it's this one, I guess. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm shit currently easy. being social engineered by a cat who's uh, claimed uh, to have never been fed in his life. Yeah, he's so. starving. Yeah. How could so, you do this, you absolute I, I, monster? So part of the reason why Kevin Mitnick is famous is because he did this sort of like poacher turned gamekeeper act where he's now a consultant, but like he did sort of like media tours and I have a transcript before he's, me. Oh yeah. If if you have ever been at like a big, especially US company, and you have had to do really, really bad phishing training, you can ca you can find Kevin Mitnick for that. Uh, the whole idea of bad phishing training is basically a thing because of him and his shitty company. He's he's like a showman. He's like uh, in a very annoying way. But on March the second, two thousand, he was called before the U.S. Senate Committee on Governmental Affairs. A bunch of guys who had no idea what the fuck a computer was. And Senator Fred Thompson asked him incredulously, "So you can compromise a target without even using the computer?" Yes. And Kevin With Mitnick said, mind. "Yes." Yeah. And and <laughs> I'd say yes too. <laughs> Shit, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, can. I just, I just find the idea of appearing in front of a senate and admitting to your ability to commit crimes really funny. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, "No, I'm, I'm really, I'm really good yeah, at." Yeah, senator, it. I'm uh, really good at crime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm under oath, motherfucker. You wanted me here. <laughs> <laughs> But so I he, thought he, he was sort of, good at lying. Like yeah. <laughs> he he hyped himself up successfully enough that that sort of became the image of a computer hacker. And we also got to talk about the movie Hackers, in which yes, yes, yes. the young, best movie ever. <laughs> was it fucking Matthew Broderick? I want to say. Yeah, I, think so. uh, I mean. Yeah. The the the, the 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 funny thing about hackers, I can tell a bit about that because it's one of my favorite movies, and I find it important as a like a hacker culture thing. Uh, the thing is, the movie Hackers at the time was like a very Hollywood idea of what hacking is. Uh, so at the time, everyone fucking hated it. There's like a literally a page on the DefCon for uh, like the biggest hacking conference basically <laughs> they had like a whole page on we need to boycott this movie this movie fucking sucks and it's fast forward like a few years and basically that movie has now defined hacker culture so hollywood just invented hacker culture in a movie that has angelina jolie being the gayest she's ever been in any movie 
uh, and also has Matthew Lillard being a trans woman. Uh, Matthew Lillard, <laughs> otherwise mostly well known for being Scooby Doo. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, incredible movie. It is the most queer baity movie Hollywood has ever produced, and that's why I love it so much. It's so trashy. It misportrays hacking culture at the time, but also then pioneered hacking culture. And also the soundtrack just fucking bang. The, the so, vision of a Kill James Bond episode is coming to me. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I am up any time for rambling about this movie for like hours. So Hell yeah. Uh, if, if we go, if we go next slide, I have a sort of a, a artist's impression of Hacker, sort of yes. 1986 edition. Um, not sure why he has a, a portrait of Drill. Um, but... uh, that's an interesting one. That that is that is foretelling something right there. Is that, is that mm. Drill or Henry Rollins or both? Are they the same? Mm. Mm. Uh, anyway, next slide, please. Um, yeah. So uh, once people started thinking about hacking, people started thinking about how you you know don't hack things or you stop things from getting hacked, uh, which leads to like the first commercial antivirus software and shit like that. Um, I mostly just, it's very difficult to find a compelling image for antivirus software, so I put one of John Dang. McAfee's uh, better uh, tweets I'm, I'm, on there. I'm thinking like uh, uh, Norton antivirus, just like taking up half the screen, saying, we we, we blocked a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, first, the first virus honestly, antivirus was honestly, like on email. Yeah, on, honestly, John McAfee illustrates the, the antivirus industry well, way better than any actual, like, thing ever could because it's obviously a uh, disingenuous industry because they depend on bad things happening so and also they have access to way too much of your computer so they can sell your data but more on that later <laughs> i will say mm. uh in a in a sort of more sympathetic note uh if you are interested uh you should look up temple os uh one of the most uh in my you know the the guy uh, who wrote it was suffering from incredibly debilitating mental illness. Oh and, fuck! And I remember says, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slurs and a bunch of stuff for recorded videos. Uh, he he, I believe, killed himself. Uh, unfortunately, but I highly yeah, recommend it's like you, outsider you try to, art as an operating try, system. Yeah, right. Try to find uh, a video on that. I I hate to give them credit, but Linus Tech Tips did a, a relatively straightforward uh, video about computer makes you crazy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in ways yes. that we don't always expect, but I would highly recommend that this guy built an operating system by himself, which is yeah, yeah because of... God told him to. Right. D there's, Possibly there's, there's one of the things. most impressive feats of engineering yeah. technically possible. There's 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 like two two ways this can go when you sit down to the computer. The good ending, you become transgender. The bad ending, you you get the it's like you become like John McAfee. And you go, yeah. uh, you know, the, the the deep state is trying to kill me uh, <laughs> at my compound in El Salvador, where I've been giving aphrodisiacs to dogs. Also, I'm trying to fuck whales, maybe. May or yeah, may also, not also have I will someone. cut off my balls if Bitcoin reaches this specific thing I'm predicting. Um, I didn't cut off his balls. Trying to do that for yeah, free. He never you know? did like that. An asshole. He never did it, even though he was still alive at the time. Hey, Roz, you want to know where his uh, bachelor uh, degree is from? Where, where where did he get his bachelor? Roanoke College, buddy. Roanoke College. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. So I I guess can we can we talk about like the commercial cybersecurity industry in its sort of like broadest sense? Oh no. We should, yeah. Because <laughs> that's uh, a thing, right? Like that is a thing. Yeah. You have you have both people who like just sell like ba what's basically snake oil, which is like most of the antivirus industry at this point. Because you can never be on top of the game, and it's easier to just sell the data you have access to than actually doing anything for your customers, which is like the common theme of capitalist uh, IT infrastructure, anyways. Uh, like I said, more on that later. Uh, <laughs> but, but like, how how am I going to stop then, from, from like clicking on like uh, you know? LimeWire Lincoln Park underscore hurt dot mp3 okay. dot exe. Uh, yeah. Bas basically, dot final dash do dash use this one. Yes. Basically, like the thing is, like commercial antivirus can protect you fairly well from like the very broad, like very broad and big campaigns that like shit like that is that you find on LimeWire. But as soon as we get to anything that is even just vaguely targeted at your organization or at you, uh, it obviously fails because like 
all of this like depends on detecting the very specific type of virus being used. And if you are like, for example, a nation state and you're like, well, this person is kind of interesting. What if we hack them? You're going to not use something that is getting detected by antivirus software because that would be fucking stupid. Uh, <laughs> so no, no, a paying for your McAfee license to Intel, which they own McAfee now, uh, will not protect you from Russia hacking you if that's something you have paranoia about. <laughs> but also, Russia is most likely not going to hack you anyway. So that sort of that sort of leads me into my into my next slide, which is the first of a couple I put up here about state actors, and I wanted to talk about that through the prism of Stuxnet, um, which is. I just hmm i yeah. just want to i'm just been imagining an alternate history where john mcafee went to work for the norfolk and western railroad now that's all that's <laughs> in my head I, <laughs> he's like in are there like on, any on whales the to fuck there of the locomotive yeah. talking about giving aphrodisiacs to dogs he's not even the weirdest dude in that cab um, yeah, he's you no, know, he's he's behind uh, he's behind the uh the throttle of 611 you know i <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So I I wanted to talk about Stuxnet personally because I love stock images, and this is a really good one. I think it's um, an absolute banger. Yeah. And because it's it's it was like I think the first example a lot of people had that like states were now doing what was then called hacking and what we're now supposed to call and I'll put an echo on this cyber warfare. Um, yeah, you call it cyber warfare if you work anywhere in like government consulting, because if you do, you need new buzzwords every five years, so it's important to swap them out. I'm uh, fucking also, reconnoitering it... the battle space. I'm, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm, I, 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 I have, I have clicked a couple buttons, and I've done I'm warfare. Doing, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing C two I star. I'm, you know, any number. I of think this things. is getting even more interesting now that, like, with the Ukraine war, we have ended up with the point where like news media is talking about how anonymous is now doing cyber warfare so we have now reached this very new point where you can just be a random person on a computer and not affiliated with any government and you can apparently be doing warfare which is pretty cool i would say uh because now finally you can live out your dreams and start world war three <laughs> like like kevin mitnick <laughs> so just I mean, ross I... deploying a water cry to buy more beer <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I also enjoy Stuxnet for a couple of reasons. The ways in which it's sort of like elegant, like uh, you know, getting into sort Very of fairly tailored to yeah, specific PLCs. Ta tailored access yeah. to like uh, you know fairly delicate industrial operations. Um, yeah, Centrifuges, right? And they just made yeah, it run over you. Like the Scotty, yeah, yeah, step seven, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and they used a forged uh, credential from Realtek. I want to say. Yeah, 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 and they they like got their way into like all sorts of companies in order to like pull this off, uh, and like have the fucking machines destroy themselves in a way that like you know happened relatively quickly, but below the level where you would notice it too quickly. It was like it's really smart. However, the access that this was was hey, just plug this weird flash drive into your work computer, please. Um, yeah, <laughs> which is people are dumb. We're I don't still know, doing that... this, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know, like, that's the thing, like, human human error is always the easiest to exploit. Like, like mm. that that is part of why I'm, all computer guys want to automate every, every single human in their vicinity, is because they are fucking scared of you. Uh <laughs> 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 what if your hack was just a guy? Yeah, but what, what if your yeah. hack is just a guy? That, that, you that is made a every... hack, baby. That's a real I, thing. The, the <laughs> thing. The thing I find interesting about Stuxnet is like how public it is, despite it having been like a US Israeli thing. Because mm. in general, whenever we talk about like state <laughs> hacking, we only talk about like the whole Western perspective of oh, Russia and China are doing these evil things we would never do. Um, which is just the general con thing about like intelligence, I guess. But yeah. Uh, yeah, the US and Israel together operate uh, what's called an APT, which is an Advanced Persistent Threat, which is a funny intelligence way of saying these people hack and they are good at it. Uh, generally, that is also like implied state affiliation. Uh, the cool thing is that all the like 
groups and companies that classify APTs happen to be American. So there are no American APTs. So don't worry about it. Don't think about that too don't hard. Google uh, Equation Group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't exist. But like, <laughs> it is kind of interesting how westernized the whole like global image of security is which is why like the whole image of Russian hacker is a thing in the first place. It's just because somehow like cybersecurity is so westernized across like a lot of the globe. Uh, it's just because like a lot of the industry is in the US or Israel. Like that's just how that happened somehow. And because, yeah. We love we love a global hegemon, don't we, folks? Yeah, we 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 love to pretend that the US would never do offensive hacking. Like, there's generally people like in the in infosec community who somehow believe that the US wouldn't do offensive hacking, which is incredibly funny to me. Because like, if there is if there is one thing the US knows how to do, it's like doing weird offensive intelligence shit. It's like, it's kind we of we literally been this... have the example of Stuxnet. We have some yeah. other examples, but most of the time, if you bring up a thing and are like, "Lol, the US might have done that," everyone is like, "No, are you stupid? They would never do this." Which, like, ha, huh? <laughs> like, and, and that's also what like the US does really well in all public statements re- related to state hacking from Russia and stuff. They pretend they very explicitly use words like "cat and mouse game," where they pretend Russia is like hunting them or something. Uh, and, and they are, and the U.S. is like helplessly uh, there, and like Russia is just towering over them, which <laughs> is like the classic case of we need to pretend our enemy is both really strong and also extremely weak. If, if only uh, we had some kind of like readily comprehensible metaphor for some kind of like spy against spy conflict. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what if uh, hmm. at horror horrors, um, you know, Putin finds Joe Biden's email address and sends him an <laughs> email that says. Uh, is your refrigerator running? Like, and then Joe I find that White House. Then I, gov, like, yes, that's what I found so interesting about when the whole like Pegasus stuff started coming out, and everyone pretended like, oh, oops, it is an accident that the West also used this. Oopsie, mm-hmm. that just kind of happened. We were only going, and then the whole pretending of like Western media where they were like, oh, look, these evil governments use that, but this should only be used by like the U.S. to hunt terrorists, which is a good thing. By the way, uh, but I, I, if anyone else the time, hunts yes. their <laughs> yeah, political don't worry opponents, about, that's don't bad. worried about <sighs> tailored access operations. They're no, not going to yeah, hack I your ne- Samsung I TV. Do. I have yeah. one of the challenge coins. Uh, it's beautiful. It's got a big spider web on it. It's a weird shape. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, also, I, I feel as if the, the Ukraine war really led to a sort of like mask dropping in both the US and Russia, where they went sort of like overnight in a way that only governments can really do from being like, what are you crazy? No, we don't. We don't hack people to yeah. of, grow up. Of course, we hack people. We've been doing it for years, and it's good that we do. Um, yeah, <laughs> I feel like, like part of that was just because somehow in the U.S., suddenly every single infosec um, guy was on Twitter begging the CIA to let them hack Russia, when they could just be doing that if they felt like it. Like you can't just do hacktivism, you know. You, but they you were all like, "Yeah, but we want to do this." And they were literally like. At CIA, uh, can we please do this? Also, can you please uh, let us smoke weed while working for the CIA? Oh Otherwise, God. we are not you doing this. Re- <laughs> <We're> doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you still have like the, the, the there, there was the other day there was this funny Twitter thread with like the NSA cybersecurity president guy who somehow infosec Twitter really likes because he posts memes sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Which that obviously redeems them, uh, but like, <laughs> but like he, someone like was like, oh no, you're kind of a shit employer. And he was like, no, the NSA is actually a really diver- diverse uh, employer. And then someone replied, okay, but what if I wanted to smoke weed? And then he was like, yeah, well, there's that, I guess. <laughs> and the fact that he even like publicly commented on that was really funny to me. There was also yeah. that one. Like he sometimes gets mad at shit posts about the NSA, which I find incredibly funny for a president of any area of the NSA to go on Twitter to discourse people over specific definitions of NSA words. <laughs> <laughs> I I I had another slide here, which I just kind of threw in basically at random, which is since we were talking about like state actors and like stuff that trickles down from them, I want to talk about ransomware a bit. Because that's one of the things where we like do have state actors denying it. Like 
every so often you'll just be like, oh yeah, your country's like postal system or like health record system, whatever, doesn't work for a week. I don't know why. Probably as ransomware. They didn't actually ask for any money, but we assume. Um, yeah. Which is strange, I would say. Um, but this is like a, a, an outgrowth of like... Um, Fuck, I don't even know if it is an outgrowth of that. I don't know what I was going to say with this. Uh, I should have I should have planned this slide it's like more a, ahead uh, of time. A couple of transit systems got got by this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like they they got various shit. I feel like the thing I always find interesting about ransomware is how this is always like the allegation of this is all orchestrated by Russia. And sometimes main, North Korea, sometimes yeah, North Korea. Yeah. yeah, but the main reason people accuse them of this is because oh, these ransomware groups never go after Russia, like. Why would you go after a country you're hosted in? Like, <laughs> that's why, just. Why would you go after a country that A, has, you know, increasingly little money, and B, if you take their money, are likely to, like, throw you out of a window and then say yeah, that you felt like, very depressed like, all of a sudden? You obviously have bigger chances of not getting in trouble with your government if you don't fuck with your government. And I feel like a surprising amount of the fucking, like, NatSec adjacent infosec community doesn't want to understand that. And I'm not here like to defend ransomware groups a lot. Like most of them are like really shitty, obviously. Mm. They sometimes sometimes the cool thing is because like most of this is now gone from just demanding money to decrypt files to extortion where they're like, if you don't pay, we are going to release all your company files. Which the interesting side effect this has is that this has led to some really important documents being published via ransomware groups, uh, hmm. which is like, yeah. So, which has also led to like more things of them choosing politically interesting targets uh, so instead of just like random targets that would pay. Because now, if you have a company where you know they are in shit, and you threaten them with releasing all their documents, they are much more likely to pay if it's just some random flower shop. <laughs> Doing, like, actual, like, targeted blackmail. Yeah. Um, right. But, I, like, I mean, this Maybe is... some of this stuff should be on so, paper, So, like, you know? that is also, like, one of the main reasons they're being accused of being state actors, but I feel like that just makes sense because people stopped paying when it was all just about decrypting files. So they had to elevate because, like, you obviously want to get paid for as much of what you do as possible. Uh, and this way, they also got way more promo because obviously anyone interested in like files of interesting companies will tweet about this ransomware group offering that up. Uh, so, mm. yeah, uh, L like that has kind of changed the landscape, but that does also get them raided way more often by like funny uh, police units such as the Ukrainian cyber police, which actually exists. Uh, they oh, yeah. release funny press photos where they, for example, blur the fucking Capri Sun bottles for some reason, and that was... <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the same time, don't blur any of the faces of their agents, so I'm like, what are you trying to hide here, exactly? <laughs> well, they get the secret Capri Suns from, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, thinking, the US. Some, some of these documents, maybe they should be on paper, this is relatively easy to guard paper, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe That's instead true. of having it on a computer attached to the internet, you put it on you put Stop it on paper, stuff to the and then you, we, we'll and then get you put there. it in a we're, box, and then you put it two, in a, a mere corner. two slides away. Uh, <laughs> also, first slide, I will be uh, back in a sec. I need to get myself yeah, some right. water. Incredible. Uh, yes. Wow, well, really the guest has never done that slides. before the rest of us before. No. I know. It's, <laughs> it's surprising. Um, I don't know. Good guest, though. This is true, yes. Yeah, so I'm guess. having a nice time. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks, you get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. 
uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. It's just in just us and the feds. Hey guys. Hello. Um, Hello. Uh, yeah, I, Liam. I, I, um, are you doing anything with my application? Um, yeah, Liam. What's up? I'm not back. You know, it's kind of exciting. I'm not the feds. Are you implying that I'm the feds? No, no I was, I was joke, implying yeah. that I was trying to be the feds. I think. No. Uh, no. I guess yeah. Alice is also the feds. I'm the only. No, I'm, I'm like, the only holy I'm, person here. It's worse. It's like I'm not the feds. I'm like aspirational about the feds. Join the postal police. Mm. Well, I mean, like, yeah, hundred percent. If they gave me like a postal a postal badge, yeah, fuck yeah, do that in a oh, second. Yeah, actually, ninety nice. percent conviction rate of trial. No, thank mm-hmm, you. Mm-hmm, yeah, no, I I feel like it's they cool don't bring charges to too many people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I, I I genuinely ended up having to have like a nuanced view on the postal inspection service, and I was like, well, two things. On on the one hand, they are surprisingly under like misattributed contributor to the war on drugs um on yes. the other hand they did basically make it so that you couldn't send child pornography in the mail anymore so that's good um mm. just you know land of contrasts i guess yeah i don't, mm. I don't necessarily agree with the, the the drug stuff but uh the the like non stuff you know that was pretty good mm-hmm yeah, you know, you gotta enforce the uh, enforce the set of laws you're given. I, I unfortunately. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, because in in you know the fifties and sixties, they were going after fucking Betty Page and Irving Claw, because you know that's that's obscenity law in the same right, way. Right, right. Uh, yeah. So, hmm. damn you, Hayes Code. All right, I am back. Nice. All right, I had I had one last slide in that little history of hacking, which is. Before we get into the, the the really fun stuff, which is Russian hackers, your nemesis and mine, um, how scared should we be of the Russian hacker? Should how we should be we shitting sh- and we- pissing ourselves constantly? Yeah, like I already kind of brought this up, but I feel like in a lot of cases you should probably be more scared of like your own country's intelligence hacking you than like Russia. <laughs> because like you are most likely not in any way important to Russian intelligence. <laughs> Or just Russians in general, I don't know. Yeah, unless you're like going in on like sort of like buying a mining company. Yeah. Like, on like the Yenisei. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't, or you I don't are know, a like, Russian dissident like, who has been exiled. Like, you know. <laughs> like if you're just going to be a random target of a random cyber attack, you are probably about as likely to get hacked by a guy from Russia as you are to get hacked by a guy from anywhere else. Uh though like there is a lot of Eastern European hackers, but a lot of that is just because of the economic situation there and that being a thing that is only like questionably like handled. Like like I don't know, a lot of people make up Russian hackers as a thing of like, oh, these people work for the Russian government when really it's just a case of them not really having the resources to go after hackers who don't do anything that the country will be interested in. Mm. So like as long as you don't touch the CIS, which I still find funny that it's called CIS, uh, <laughs> you are pretty <laughs> fine if you're in Eastern Europe and doing any hacking things. Which like as I brought up with the ransomware thing, that 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 is why these groups don't go after any anything in that area. Um, we'll say these yeah, these yeah. Russian guys are very good at modding video games. I have found. yeah yeah, also, sure. yeah. <laughs> they, they they are they are also very good about having French political opinions on Twitter. Apparently, oh boy, because yeah, it, it, oh, it's yeah. like the best one hundred percent like a fourteen year old Macedonian teenager who like has an ideology that only exists in the New Order mod for Hearts of Iron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i just meant like the thing of like if you are a liberal in the u.s and someone on the internet so, says something you don't like you can just call them russian that will work mm. that will definitely <laughs> shut them down just call them a bot or russian and that will make yeah. their political ideology go away don't worry about it <laughs> on the other hand i guess we have seen that like you you can pose a threat to liberalism with a little bit of like state action in the right places, even if it is just getting oh. John Podesta uh, to click on a link that says, <laughs> you know, click here for free hard drive cleanup. 
Yeah, um, ab- absolutely. I just find the idea that like random weird like blue maga Twitter accounts are getting harassed by random Russian guys who are somehow angry at them for liking Kamala Harris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, because I, guess... I don't know, you can just have an actual leftist political opinion on Twitter and people will call you a bot for it. Because it's easier it. than confronting the fact that people actually have cooler opinions than you. So, so having, having thus dismissed their bad guys, I think it's now time for us to talk about our bad guys. Next slide, please. Extremely low resolution slide. I um, know I'm a Russian bot. That guy, guy is, you is Ruski, real. You seek. Oh, you know, the laptop's <laughs> good because there's a VGA port. Ooh. <laughs> uh, so, we now get to... Uh, so, say you're on the computer. You as a citizen of sort of like a, a, a Western European country or the United States, something like that. You, you want to like store stuff on the computer. What do you want to store on the computer? I mean, posts, um, holiday we photos. We love posting. Uh, by Usenet downloads, porno, uh, pornography. Uh, Usenet downloads, like my I'm whole just, furry porn collection. I'm just yeah, doing Usenet one. Yes. Um, <laughs> by contrast, um, I have a lot of what pictures might... of trains. Yeah, I know yeah, nice. you do. Yeah. Uh, by contrast, <laughs> what what might people want to store about you on their computers, with or without your knowledge? And I submit oh. that the answer to that is everything. Everything, 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 because you everything. can either you think you can sell it in five years, mm-hmm. and we, because... we've talked about this a lot on Trash Future, like this urge towards big data and trying to develop the stuff to like pass huge data sets and exploit them, um, because you know, it's, it's yeah, the next I, thing. I brought I brought this up on another podcast the other day, but like the, the whole idea of big data is the new oil. The fact that like weird consultants had to phrase it that way for like company owners. To make sense to them is really funny to me because like what 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 does that mean <laughs> because, it sure. means it, payment I, doesn't yeah i i yeah. love passwords i i just love like like mckinsey passwords or whatever <laughs> yeah i mean i i guess like unless we want to do justin's thing of we just have everything on paper yeah. i kind of <laughs> i i concede that to live in society somebody's going to have to put something about you on the computer some of the time. Yeah, I, ideally that would be on your own computer, but we came up with this cool idea that is called the cloud and doesn't have anything to do with weather and definitely doesn't have anything to do with it being cheaper. It's just cooler to also steal your data in that way. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's like if, if you recall back to information wanting I, to be I, free, if, if we can say information wants anything, when these people are operating it, what information wants is to be fucking piled together with a bunch of other information and collateralized. Yeah. I, I, think, yeah. I, think, I think one of <laughs> yes. the best recent examples of like data on like clouds not really being in any way protected is that Google randomly decided that, wait, we are going to start uh, scanning Google Drive for any copyrighted materials and taking them down even in your personal Google Drive, which is the most Google move possible to free up storage. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, a very in- has like many interesting implications for things such as archival, uh, because, yeah. It's so funny to be like, I need to free up some disk space. I'm going to invent the Panopticon. <laughs> Yeah, I I think also like just the idea that like yeah this this solves any sort of problem like the whole idea of moving storage away from the user when and and at the end of the day you just have more copies of the data which is obviously the actual like thought process behind it especially because now you can give those copies to the U.S. government who has been begging you for this ability for fifteen years but mm-hmm. yeah. I, yeah. I guess if if I can apply some theory here, oh, a very boy. dangerous thing to do. I, I I would suggest that this sort of imbalance in data and knowledge about that data and access to that data and privacy uh, reflects an imbalance in society. One that a guy with a big beard uh, wrote about, you know, a long time ago. Mm. Um, yeah. And it, it's it's getting easier and easier to hold more data about more people in more ways, and then getting easier to exploit that data and sell that sure. data and you know yeah. do uh, fun things with that data. The convenience of having your light switch connected to the internet. Uh, also, also that is a good moment to bring in the reminder to people that if you have if if you have a a ring 
uh, doorbell, please smash that thing because the <laughs> cops the cops can access the camera on that thing without a warrant, and they will do that if anything vaguely bad happens in your neighborhood. If your neighbor has a ring camera, please also smash that. Uh, just because. They have microphones that pick up things in like a 25 meter range. So if you are Jesus. standing on your porch and talking, your neighbor's ring camera will pick that up and but the cops can just access that via some funny it's, little it's collaboration really, like, with the police because Amazon loves cops. Yeah. And also it's just the fact that Jeff Bezos could just like look up your conversations probably if he felt like it. But what's and really if, interesting to me is that it makes people complicit with it. Like that's one of the things that right. people love ring cameras because they love being cops. They love yeah, being like, yes. I am going to find the motherfucker who took my package. And as someone who recently had a package taken, I am going to, I am every cop in the world right now. <laughs> off oh, of I, that shit. I, just, I, I place info in in every other package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I you guess are, you're sort of... taking this Mark Rober shit to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like a good rule of thumb is that, like, ev every computer is a cop, right? It, yeah. If you type something into a computer, you are typing it to a police officer. But some are more cops than others, and a yeah. ring doorbell is like Use 20 cubes. cops. Use cubes, <laughs> you idiots. Also, also, I feel like that the, this, this scary thing about the ring stuff is that, like, with. For like a year now or so, it has kind of become a meme to just post videos of people doing weird shit in front of your house door online, yeah, which is shit, obviously yeah. already a massive problem privacy wise. But like people are like pretty actively buying ring cameras to make fun of their neighbors on Twitter for clout. And that's kind of fucked up. And I don't know what that says about society, mm. but we sure do live in one. I guess I the one other of thing the, is. One of the mm. big advantages of big data is all the great ads you get served now. They're that so are tailored good. They're, to your interests. Yeah, yeah. Such as for me, it's largely global intermodal shipping, which I do a <laughs> lot of, of <laughs> course. <laughs> I, yeah. That's the least surprising I, I, thing I've I, ever I, heard. I, for a while, have been constantly on Twitter getting uh, like mining ads from Glencore, and I'm like, shout out Swiss mining company Glencore. <laughs> uh, I am going to buy fucking raw materials now, and it's very I'm cool go, that you have a buy. very, very diverse office team that is abusing people uh, in the global south. That well, is I very need 11,000 nice tons of iron ore right now. So, <laughs> yeah. you never know. So short, of, short of going Ted Kaczynski mode, right, there is no way to opt out of this, is there? Because if you, if you just to exist in society, yeah. you have to spill some data around. Yeah, you, you can't <laughs> Even if you don't own any devices or anything, you are like existing around people that are in a way surveilling you for both corporations and the government. I, and I'm not telling you to beat up people around you because they are not like they, they're am. just complete they are just <laughs> complicit in this. There isn't really any way to like opt out of any of this, even though like the EU is trying is, is pretending that we can. Uh but yeah, we we really can. I guess I I think the thing that's happening, and maybe I'm being too optimistic here. I, I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but I think there has been kind of a generational shift in how we view privacy, and that people my age and younger, uh, I'm I'm 31 for the record, uh, don't think that we have any. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. Yes. I yeah. don't know. I feel like I feel like in a way that's sad though, because it's a very doomerist view of the world sure. at the end of the day. Like, it's a very defeatist view to be like, well, we don't have any privacy, so why try? Because, like, that's kind of where it ends up a lot. Yeah, it's just uh, giving up on the defeatist idea of, like, well, that's just how it is, I guess. Uh, I feel like, in a way, it would be nicer. Like, I'm not trying to go back to the idea of, well, I'm just not going to use a phone and then I'm going to be secure. But, like, I feel like actually trying to fight for getting at least some privacy back would be nice, but... I think yeah. the key the key is basically to like have something in your life that you just don't post about. Like yeah. do, do do whatever you want and then just don't post about the one thing, you know? Um but you know, take up playing the guitar, buy a guitar in cash at a store, and then like yeah, never I... be photographed with it. Yeah, have have your se secret guitar in your secret guitar safe house. That's 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 the move. <laughs> secret guitars. Um, Come no, on, circle. Know. Get a model railroad. Don't post pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, for, for, I mean, for all you know, all of us could have secret model railroads. Um, this is true. Yeah. yeah. 
We yeah. are but that's, that's what actually brings this podcast together. It's the secret model railroad. That's right. That's right. Th this is activism uh, in a very real way. Um, but I, I, I put in just a couple of examples of um, like big data in action, and it's a kind of a cheap. What, why does the prison resemble the what the the university thing? And the answer is because this is what a big data center looks like. But I think it's funny anyway. So next slide, yeah. please. We had a we had a render of. Facebook's Utah data center, um, where they store all of your like family's posts about how there's going to be climate lockdowns. And do you remember when the bin man was hard? Those all live here. <laughs> yeah, and like the happy, cheery posts about how like someone's grandma just died of cancer, and because they don't know how Facebook works, they somehow mm -hmm. put like the smiley, like laugh face, crying, yeah. cry, yeah. cry yeah. laughing emoji. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, the old yeah. Elon Musk. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, my grandma just died. Interesting. Um, <laughs> so, so, I mean, this 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 ties to the thing that we said earlier, which is that you know the cloud is just other people's computers. Well, all of those computers live in places like this, which are like yeah. globally distributed. Mostly in the middle of nowhere in the U.S. And if yeah, you are Elon Musk, you can just turn them off, and Twitter will half fall apart. But you can pat yourself on the back for saving money. Uh, but yeah. also what we have most importantly learned from uh, Elon Musk is that you also don't have to pay your rent. No. You just opt out of it. Hit the bricks. Yeah. You know, it doesn't apply yeah, to that you. That if anyone an gets evicted, one, it's your yeah. employees and not you. So it is fine, yeah. actually. <laughs> True, yeah. He's going to make them all move mm. to Austin. Or wherever so the, the other hell thing, it is he lives now. Oh, Christ. I, the, the other thing I would say about this is that like most of this is data that... like. Even if you are unusually astute about computers, you probably do not know that Facebook has about you. Yeah. Also, oh yeah, a lot that doesn't. Of a it's a cool shit. Ask, ask, ask companies for the data they have on you. There should at least, if you live in the EU or a country that US companies think is in the EU, like Switzerland, uh, we are not <laughs> in the EU. Uh, you can just request your data. Uh, by now, you can mostly also do it if you're in the US, but it's probably hidden a little more because they're not as scared about getting fined over it. But request data from companies like Facebook and Google and, and everyone else because it is very interesting to see what these companies know about you or think they know about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God help you if you've ever had your DNA sequenced for 23 and no, or something fuck like that. No. Uh, <laughs> oh god, no. Oh yeah, you can tell those companies not to share their shit because they also love to share with cops. That's how like year long unsolved cases get solved. That's, yeah. that's why I did it. That's why I did 23 and me is because I don't like my extended family and I wanted to see if any of them were serial killers. <laughs> At a girl. Well, uh, you are <laughs> going to find out that you girl. are a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> shit. What if my secret hobby I didn't tell anyone about was serial killing? Jesus. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good hobby not to tell anyone about. So. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, for, for my, for my cheap... wrong with killing people morally. I yeah, think. I mean, <laughs> ask, ask the government. They yeah, do it all the time. Of, <laughs> they speaking do it all the time. Of, yeah. Next, next slide, please. For my cheap, for my cheap gimme. This is uh, the National Security Agency's Utah Data Center. I, I love the pictures you chose because it does just look like the same thing from a yeah. different angle. <laughs> yeah, it looks and like I mean, it looks the, like one of yeah. those. You know those Greek houses? They don't finish the house because then they don't have to pay property taxes. Yeah, that's what this looks like. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is just what it looks like when you build a building to keep a bunch of servers cold. But like, yeah. uh, th this is the same thing. Like architecturally, structurally, it's probably better guarded. But uh, yeah, and they, like they probably yeah. have a bunch more guns here. Yeah, they, all they, will, to shoot, be... they will shoot you half a second quicker. Yeah, they not they the Facebook to be, one. Shoot uh, uh, tilt up buildings. But but so, the thing know. is, the thing is, a lot of like company data centers, including like Facebook and stuff, they also have armed guard that, guards that are allowed to shoot you. So uh, that oh, yeah. that is something well, to I, keep in mind. Just I do because not it's not get killed by the Facebook. Cops. Just because just because it's the Nazi government doesn't mean they can't shoot you. Hmm. Uh, and and yeah, next really idea, like... I got an idea for the next live show, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think I'm this building the, the, real easy with a tornado. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean the, the thing with all these data centers is that they're always redundant. There is at least like two others of these, and for the NSA one, we probably don't even really know where they are. Uh, but there is always multiple of these. So if one goes out because tornadoes happen, or like a flood, or a cold thing, or like Elon Musk decides to turn it off because he's feeling like it, uh, <laughs> things will generally keep working, mostly more or less.
we made the computers too survivable because we designed the computers to survive nuclear war, and they and now they survive Elon Musk, which is very yeah. annoying. Um, yes. But like the only difference with uh, with intelligence data is that like definitionally you don't know that someone has that data about you. Yeah, and um, the, N the NSA does do a lot more surveillance than like. Like they do surveil most internet traffic. It's just that they store it somewhere and they don't look at it. But, yeah. but yeah, they, they so have like very, various of... ways of like searching through it or like you know. Yeah. And and also I should say partnering with like most other intelligence agencies in the world. Yeah. Um, th this is a thing that GCHQ is great for because famously all internet traffic through the UK is radioactively surveilled because we have no civil rights protections whatsoever about yeah, it. Yeah, but same, same in Switzerland, where they even and, and, uh, um, gave them more permissions for online surveillance. We have, like, basically the Prevent Act, even just, just even worse, where now you can get 12-year-olds house arrest for a post they made on Facebook um, without, without a warrant. <laughs> um, but which is great, and the, the UN Human Rights Council loved it, which is why everyone voted for it. Um, anyways, <laughs> yeah. so, side, side rant about Swiss direct democracy and, and, and uh, manufactured consent over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just marching down to the town square with my like 600-year-old halberd to do a like vote by a show of hands as to whether or not we should <laughs> yeah. do this. I don't know what a computer is. I don't even think we should let women vote. Um, you know, yeah, so right, none, none of the women showed up that day. <laughs> this, this has been the Appenzell jokes hour. Um, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> GCHQ and and um and the NSA but also. Have this, also, like, if you if you hmm. want a bunch more Appenzell jokes, basically any joke an, an American would make about Alabama also applies to Appenzell, just so you can <laughs> enhance your repertoire with some incest jokes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It's like, wow. Yeah. Um. Very, very good cheese. I was just though. attacked um, by a, a pizza boy. Um. <laughs> yeah. I, I also just wanted quickly to talk about the weird symbiotic relationship between, for example, because it's the one I know best, GCHQ and NSA, where yeah, like the, the, the NSA has or sort of five like, eyes, whatever it is. Yeah, the five eyes, where uh, NSA has like certain restrictions constitutionally on like how many Americans. Yeah, you like, just American surveil the surveil. other the other governments you're partners yeah, with, so you, so just, you can you, you just come for them. Right, but... Yeah, you call yeah. Shelton and you go, can you can you do this guy for us and we'll do this guy for you? Um, you know, you you escape each other's regular uh, regulation completely. Yeah, it's is, it's great. great. I I love the international intelligence community. Uh, where's the shadow government when you need it? Um, yeah. So yeah, do we have anything fun to say about intelligence before we move on to our second to last slide that I put together? Hmm. I feel like huh? that's it. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm pretty Perfect. unintelligent, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Then, uh, and I, I got a beautiful stock image of this one. Um, well, I, I, I raise a couple of questions here. This is, I throw this open to discussion for the group. Uh, first question: Do e any of these people, Facebook, the NSA, GCHQ, you know, Snapchat, whatever, use all of this data they have responsibly? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I am a non-state actor, and I have always used data responsibly. So no, yeah. you haven't, you <laughs> fucking liar. <laughs> At least we're, we're, one person is using it responsibly. You, that, that ain't you. It's not me, but it's not you either, motherfucker. <laughs> non-state actor would be a pretty good bio. I might change mine to that. Um, <laughs> f further question. They have all this data. Do they know how to stop other people from getting at it in general. I wouldn't know anything about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm one absolutely Pokemon not, no. cat. The, the, there, yeah. there's, there's the funny little thing about how it's always cheaper to pay after a breach happens than paying for not having it happen in the first place. Uh, especially now that in the world of unlimited capitalism, we have fucking cyber insurance. You can get insured for getting hacked in the future. You you don't even have to worry about that bit anymore. Um, yeah, no, it's always cheaper to not give a shit about getting hacked until you get hacked, um, which applies to like all things corporations can budget for. Uh, so yeah. Nice. Ideally, you have better crisis communications prepared than this local airline did, especially since uh, within like three months they got hacked twice. Apparently, a ransomware group got them in November already. 
and they hmm. still didn't know how to do communications about this. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, let, let's say for the sake of argument, right, that we suddenly all become libs, right, like me, okay, and we go, mm -hmm. it's good for the government to like have data because the government is nice and they're my friend and they're going to use it to help me. Um, how would we fix cybersecurity if we wanted to? Is it possible to do that? Is it possible to like store if, if this we, much data secure? If we wanted the absolute liberal approach to it, it's just then you find companies really heavy sums, so it gets cheaper for them to care about this stuff in the first place than to care about it later. Hell that yeah, would massive be regulation. Extremely, that would be the lib approach, is to just be like, if a company gets hacked ever, they have to tell the whole world about it and also pay like one billion in fines. And, and that is the lib solution to hacking. Is you just find companies for getting hacked, um, while while obviously while obviously also punishing hacking more strictly because that is important because hackers are also bad people inherently. <laughs> you could also um, appoint very competent people such as Robert Mueller to prevent <laughs> yeah. hacking uh, oh, to certain think of panels. His, uh, think of his uh, think of his his suit his drip. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you appoint Robert very Mueller dripped out icon. people. <laughs> <laughs> appoint because very hackers out. are also dripped out. So. Serious people. Yeah. I, um, I believe in Robert Mueller and the rule of law. Yeah, I, I wonder if the solution is basically I mean, yeah. I think we should have abolished the CIA a long time ago. Sure. Uh, I don't I don't really know what the solution looks like other than but I don't think you can trust state actors to, to do this sort of shit. No, uh, I, I don't. I, I feel like the thing is that there isn't really a solution. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, like like you can't solve it. You could like you can at best create incentives, which is the most liberal solution to anything ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you you could like give companies incentives to at least fix like all the low hanging fruit issues that so far have been cheaper to just not give a shit about. Uh, but that will just fix, like, that will not fix Russia, uh, l like, fix all the access points Russia has into your American computer systems that are very fragile. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is, like, an actual solution, like, because I did think about it when we were talking before, be uh, like, in the days before this. I did think about it because, like, e even, like, this is a problem where, like, a lot of why currently data isn't secure is, like, the answer to the question is, like, capitalism and it's cheaper to not give a shit. But at the end of the day, you can't really fix most issues either if you are not motivated by capital. It's just that computer systems are inherently not secure if you network them. And the solution is to just stop making the sand think, I guess. Go back to paper. We're doing it. We've got there again. Yeah, yeah we are now at the paper solution. Uh, or alternatively, next... make your network cables more wretched. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, next, next slide, please. <laughs> my last, my last slide, um, which sort of I, I feel like we've already answered, but was just purely to be like, can we, can we like imagine a society um, where we are good at this, where we're like we. This is more of a benefit than it is a hazard. I, I feel like I feel like if anything, we can imagine a world where most of the data that could be stored on shared computer systems that are networked wouldn't matter if it were public because it were like half public data anyway, uh, hmm. as in like just government data or whatever, where like we should have access to it anyways, because like that is all the most well-guarded computer secrets. It's like weird shit the government doesn't want people to know because they are doing shit no one wants them to do. Uh, and ideally they wouldn't be doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I, I feel like that is kind of the thing. And also like you wouldn't need to have, I, I feel like a lot of like the thing is that, um, the whole idea of having everything in like a cloud and network is a very capitalist idea that doesn't really make sense in the same way in a yeah, un non-capitalist system. Under Soviet communism, you would put all of this on one enormous computer. Um, <laughs> yes. But, but we would go back I, to mainframes. We built <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but no, I feel, we, I feel we like, I feel main like yeah. I feel like the whole idea of you not owning your own data is a very capitalist idea that Thanks doesn't for make steam, a whole yeah. lot of sense. 
unless you have another authoritarian state, in which case that authoritarian state would obviously also have an interest in some central authority owning all your data. But <laughs> yeah, the, the, the get, Red CIA to bring who are out good. the anarchist inside me. I can I can get really annoying with this. I can be like I can hoist this cool piss yellow and black flag I found and be like. <laughs> Well, what if? What if I owned my own data so much I could like market it myself and like trade it? What if I could sell my data to the like, oh, yeah. oh, you just congrats! Like... You just invented NFTs. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to safety third. Great presentation, Alex. Uh, thank you. I, I believe the solution is to replace the internet with a series of fax machines. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> And then Famously they, secure they, communications protocol. I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to say it's a great slideshow, <laughs> but I do think it was great in terms of it. I managed not to make it last five hours this time. Uh, safety well, I'm third. proud of you. Very, very good. Shake hands with danger. Hello, Alice, Roz, Liam, brackets, yay, Liam, Thank end you. brackets, and Devin, who is not Partial on the call. Partial credit, no, did yeah, not mention kinda. the guest. Did not mm. mention the guest who was yeah, here. Get yes. fucked. Damn. Yeah, I, I'm leaving. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Transphobic, this, Swissphobic. This is the tale of my first landlord. We'll, oh, no. We will be calling Cunt. Oh. <laughs> okay. well, that, that is what we should be calling all landlords. I, I, <laughs> mom, mom, if you're listening to this, I didn't say the word. Roz said the word. You can't get mad at me. It's, it, it's it, a, is this, it's is this Scottish or like, is this British or like Australian is my question. That's a it's good gotta question. Be one of the two. I'm not sure. I, I believe the, the, the Black and Decker chainsaw, which will be relevant later. Um, I guess this is a hedge clipper. Mm. Yeah, um, militates towards British. Uh, after being forced out of uni dorms and into British. the hell that is yeah. the private rental market, we moved into Cunt's property. Then discovered it was constructed out of mold. That's mold with a U, so yeah, British. Instead of bricks. That's unfortunate. This caused a problem with the plank of MDF supporting the bath. I'm not sure what MDF is. MDF is like thin, it's like an engineered wood. Uh, okay, like fiber that, that, that's, um, that's what I thought, yeah. What does it fucking stand for? Medium density fiber board. Medium density fiber. That shouldn't be structural. <laughs> it's only holding <laughs> up a make it more wretched. <laughs> it's only holding up a bath. It's fine. I hold on a second. I, I have a cat on my shoulder who is attempting to rip his claw out of my clothing. The uh, quality okay, of the go. housing stock in this country is genuinely yes. it is this bad. Yes. This caused the problem with the plank of medium density fiber board. Supporting the bath, which it disintegrated <laughs> and caused the bath to start leaking. Oh boy. Better leaking than coming through the floor, you know? Cunt decided that this was our fault. He Landlord. put some shitty glue over the leak, tried to take our deposits, and demanded a grand on top to cover the replacement, threatened to sue us. If we didn't comply, we responded, fuck you. We're going to arbitration, getting a, get a fucking plumber before the bathroom falls into the kitchen. More than reasonable. Yes. The arbitrator decided we had a point about the house being rotten to the core. So we'd merely have to split the cost with cunt. <laughs> we celebrate. <laughs> thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. We celebrated the half win and not getting sued. A few weeks later, the ceiling of the kitchen collapsed because the new <laughs> bath was also installed incorrectly. Shout out to Cunt's mate who reckons he's a plumber. Oh, they love to get their mate or then fucking like yeah. brother or cousin. Or yeah. Yeah. They're, they're always plumbers. Yes. All, all, if, if you're a landlord, you have like someone in your family who's a plumber. That's just that's allegedly. just automatically an happens. alleged plumber. 
The I sent cousin you Kenny. Self identified plumber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sort of a trans medicalist, but for plumbers, you've got to show me some fucking documentation on that shit. Sorry. <laughs> We're extremely lucky that this happened at night, since if any of us had been in there and hadn't been killed by the initial collapse, the fungal pneumonia would have claimed us shortly thereafter. Oh yeah, that starts the fucking Last of Us pandemic right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All but one of us had gone, for, gone home for the summer, leaving one girl with a major stress-related heart condition awoken by the sound of what she assumed was a break-in. We're lucky her heart didn't just stop. Jesus. Now, Cunt paid the repairs on that one. Good for him. But this a nice guy. isn't the But this isn't the story I want to tell. This is all set up to make this rare positive safety third taste even sweeter. As we moved out, Cunt was impressed enough with how well we cleaned the place up that he couldn't find a reason to steal our deposit for that year and offered me six quid an hour to help him with maintenance on his properties. And I agreed, because I had a crippling Magic the Gathering addiction to feed. I'll be there. Pretty, pretty <laughs> certain that's below minimum wage. Uh, definitely is now. I was about now, to say, but... uh, six, six quids, uh, definitely below minimum wage in the United States. I, uh, I mean... We have this. Back. We have this weird thing where you like. We have a lower minimum wage if you're like under twenty five because we hate children and the youth. Mm -hmm. That seems very stupid. Yeah, it is. Don't worry. We get. We have exemptions for disabled people, which could well take uh, takes advantage cool. of. Cool. Oh yeah. Wow. It, it, that's respectively the most British and most American thing I've heard in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> After a couple of days of lecturing me about how Thatcher was great and how Corbin will lead me astray, he told me to trim some hedges behind a shed and handed me one of these. Picture. Black and Decker hedge trimmer. Yeah, I have nightmare flashbacks to these of my dad just hacking out every bush in my backyard badly. <laughs> and these things are so fucking loud. They are mm. unbelievably so. Like they, they, they do not look like a loud thing. But this is like the loudest sound you will ever hear. Yeah. I had no experience or training using a hedge trimmer. Well, you know, you get it from Walmart. I mean, it's Black and Decker, um, and I could barely reach the tall hedges, so I took it slow. My safety first approach pissed him off, so he took the job into his own hands. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Landlord's doing work. That is always scary. Yeah. Thirty seconds later, I hear a crack and a scream, followed by Cunt rushing out from behind the shed with blood pouring from one of his fingers. <laughs> he had gone too fast, lost his grip, and now he could see the bone of his finger. Fuck he me! Was, oh, fuck no! <laughs> he was lucky he didn't cut clean through. Using my very limited first aid knowledge, I went to go get some vodka and a clean rag to disinfect the wound. <laughs> no, first aid provided by Justin Rostiak. <laughs> no, this is, this is the level of first aid landlords deserve, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. To which Honest, he raised... Honestly, vodka is too good for a landlord. Yeah. <laughs> to which he screamed objections. Well, you would, wouldn't you? I then told him to raise his arm above his head and get his car keys so I could drive him to the hospital. He ignored me. He wrapped it in a dirty, oily rag <laughs> and told me to call mm. his wife to pick him up mm. because even having nearly lost a digit, there's no way in hell he was letting me drive his Porsche. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. It yeah, we already her... said that, Alice. <laughs> it took longer for her to just arrive than it would have for me to get him to the A and ampersand semicolon E, um, which I accident assume is an emergency. Let's accident and emergency, yes. Uh, the last interaction I had with Cunt was him forcing a bloodstained handful of 20s into my hands as his wife dragged him into the car. <laughs> I got off work early that day with a full day's pay. Join a renter's union. <laughs> jo yes. Join a renter's union and fucking don't let, I mean, do if you want, let landlords operate power tools because they will discipline themselves like a, disobedi a disobedient Yakuza. Do let, you know? do let landlords operate power tools, but not while you're around or you might have to yeah. take responsibilities. 
if this, if this person tried to take responsibility, he wouldn't let yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I'm not going to hold it over my head because fuck you. Like, that's the <laughs> ultimate level boomer spite is like, yes. no, I will bleed out of my fucking finger you, before you I let you tell you me. You dumb millennial. Yeah. <laughs> Remember I will, when I would rather hot? die than let you touch my part. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> That's a good safety third. It's been a minute that's since a, we had one that's that good. A, that's a yeah, pretty good safety yeah, third. Thanks, yeah. thanks for not making me want to throw up this time. Well, for a minute mm -hmm. there, but... <laughs> I yeah, deleted my east as a red bad. drop, otherwise I would use that instead of this. Shake hands with danger. Um, our next episode will be on Chernobyl. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Yeah, Maya. If the people want more Maya, where yeah. can they find you? Okay, so I am on Twitter on at, at underscore nine crime you. They have suspended me a few times. So uh, yeah, if I am not on Twitter anymore, uh, you can also find me online at maya.crimeu.gay. Well, oh, uh, which has other than my absolutely website. fucking yeah. banger URL. Which yeah. has <laughs> all my links and stuff uh, where you can yeah, find can, me if have... I have to make a new Twitter account for some weird reason because they don't like me too much on that website. Um, yeah, can so. I can I just say you have the best web design in the business? Oh uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Just I just great. wanted to add add um, a uh, uh, what should we call it a uh, a caveat to that. If the people want more Maya, but other than Feds, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the sure, Feds already more know where to find want you. More of yeah. us, yeah. yeah you can just feds go on Twitter. Unfortunately, know where to find me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They have unfortunately sent to my local cops to my house before, so. Oh my god. Ima imagine being which like is, a Swiss which is like still, beat cop. Which is, yeah, the, the, the funniest thing I think is that for the first time in their entire life, our local police force was able to answer to press requests from fucking Bloomberg, because um, the, the day I got raided, I knew that I needed to like make sure that, that I am the one telling the narrative and not the U.S., uh, so within two hours of getting raided, I called up my mate at Bloomberg. I was like, lol, I got raided. Uh, so that got broken by a Bloomberg, uh, which is always funny. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think the funniest thing about when I got raided was when the computer forensics guy of the cops told me that. Uh, so this is not very official right now. But by the way, what you did was pretty cool. Uh, so, <laughs> you, so you know how motivated the local cops were during that entire raid and doing work for the US, which Switzerland famously loves doing work for other governments. Uh, we are very <laughs> pleased about doing work for random governments. To be fair. Okay. We we Maya. do do that, but it depends on like what there is for us to yeah, gain. Yeah, uh, the <laughs> the greatest. Uh, you don't have to hand it to him on many occasions, but watching uh, U.S. Marshals frog march uh, Seth Seth Blatter out of a hotel room in Zurich. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> no, I I, I I didn't mean to defend Switzerland with that. It's just a twi I Switzerland. Didn't mean to defend Switzerland. <laughs> Switzer Switzerland only gives a shit about the U.S. if there's something for us to gain. Because Switzerland, famous, Switzerland is neutral, and by that, what, what we mean by that is that we will do anything you want as long as you pay us. Uh, so <laughs> Can I have my gold back, please. <laughs> uh, so you will have to. You can dig under the Bundeshaus and burn, and it's somewhere there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, if you're just trying to, you're just trying to get him to dig an extra bear pit. <laughs> <laughs> Never know you're gonna need one. Um, yeah. All right, Maya. Thanks it? so much for coming on. Yeah, Maya. Thanks it. for yeah, coming this on. Was, this was, a good this time. was a fun time. time. And, and get me on whenever you want to talk more about computers, which I yeah, wouldn't would recommend. Fun. But uh... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now uh, we'll right. do. We'll, we'll, we'll have a new podcast policy. Everyone needs to have a federal indictment to be a guest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so happy to be on here every month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Right. Bye. I think Bye. that was the podcast.